In this video, we're going to cover section 7.3, and we're going to cover three sets of trig identities here. We're going to have our double angle, our power reducing, and our half angle formulas. And all three sets of these formulas are actually very, very closely related. Um, you can get pretty much the second two from the first set of identities. And I want to show you how we can find at least one of these. We don't have to go through and find them all, but these three that we're looking at here are called uh, the double angle formulas or double angle identities. And they're called that because at the beginning of all of them, you have double some angle in here. Okay. And when you apply these, it's going to actually have the angle that you started with, assuming you're going from left to right here. Um, so now we know why they're called double angle. Um, I also want to point out another thing before we prove that first one, and that is for this double angle identity, we actually have three options. So if we're wanting to replace cosine of two theta with something, we have a choice between these three things here on the right. Um, and in some questions, maybe we want to get rid of all the cosines. Um, and so maybe it might be nice to use the third option. Maybe instead we want to get rid of, or we only want cosines instead of get rid of cosines. If we only want cosines, maybe using the second one might be ideal. Okay. And maybe there might be some situation where maybe we want to use the first version of this. Okay. But let's go ahead here on the side and see how we could actually prove this. So I'm going to just bring this over here. And I'll put this up top. And yeah, if we were going to prove this, it, it's actually pretty cool. So is what you want to do, of course, is we'll start off with that sine of 2 theta. But there's a nice way that we can rewrite that. We can rewrite that as sine of theta plus theta. And it ends up that we have a trig identity that can help us find the sine of the sum of two angles. It's in fact our sum formula for sine, which we have in 7.2. The sum formula for sine looks like this. Okay. So it says sine of the first angle, cosine of the second, plus cosine of the first, sine of the second. Okay. So let's go, uh, let's go apply that identity over here. Okay. So this is going to give me sine of my first angle, cosine of my second angle, plus cosine of my first angle, and then sine of my second angle. Okay. And if you notice here, these are both the same term. They're both sine theta, cosine theta. And so this gives us two sine theta, cosine theta. And you can do the same thing with these other two down here or over here to the left, if you'd like to. Um, then we have our power reducing formulas. And maybe I'll prove the first one again here. I'm going to copy this and bring it over here. But we'll talk about these for a second before I actually go and prove it. I just want to paste it here. So before we actually try to prove it, um, let's talk about these power reducing formulas. So it ends up that in calculus, and I, is what I'm going to be referring to here is one, one of the applications of your power reducing formulas. When you get to calculus, and specifically calculus 2, there will be a lot of situations where you want to reduce the power on your trig functions um, so that you can do uh, what we'll call an antiderivative, okay? And that's exactly what these formulas are for, is bringing that power down, okay? But these three formulas, again, are very much so related to these ones up here. For instance, to get this formula here, I could actually take um, my double angle formula for cosine, and specifically, I want... Uh, one version of this okay specifically i want the one that has the sine squared in it okay because as you can see this one has a sine squared in it 
um, but it also has a cosine of two theta. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to, in a moment, let's see what I'm going to do. Yeah, okay. So I said that we would start off here with that cosine of two theta is equal to one minus two sine squared of theta. Okay. And I'm going to solve it for sine squared. So if we keep going here, well, we could add the two sine squared, if I can spell it correctly, two sine squared theta to each side here. Okay. And then I could subtract that cosine over. And then similarly, or uh, to finish this off, we'll just go ahead and we'll divide by two or multiply by one half. They're both equivalent. And so this is what we end up with here, okay. which is exactly what we wanted. Okay. All right. Well, we could have done the same thing here for the cosine one. Okay. We could have used instead the other version of the double angle identity for cosine of two theta, which involves a cosine squared. And if we solve this one for cosine squared, we'll get this one. And then if we divide both of our results here, sine squared over cosine squared, we'll get tangent squared. Okay? And so that's where this one comes from. All right. Now, lastly, these three that we have down here are called the half angle formulas. These are the ones we'll use the least out of the ones on this page, okay. it doesn't mean you're never going to use them. It just means you're going to use these less. Um, but is where they can be helpful is if you have some angle where if you doubled it, it would be easy to compute it. Okay. Um, so is what I mean here is like sine of 15 degrees. That's not really something I can do. Um, well, I can if I use trig identities. Um, and one option in terms of trig identities that we could use to help us find like sine of 15 degrees would be this one here, because that 15 is now going to be a 30, right? Alpha is two times alpha over two. Now there's another uh, thing to mention about these formulas. They uh, all except for a couple of the ones for tangent have this plus or minus. So to figure out whether it's going to be positive or negative. You're going to have to figure out what quadrant alpha over two lies in. And based on what quadrant alpha over two is in, you'll know whether sine or cosine or tangent should be positive or, or negative. Okay. Um, and then one last thing here, tangent does have a couple of interesting uh, half angle formulas, specifically these two right here. And I say they're interesting because they don't have the plus or minus like the other two do. Okay. But we could actually come up with these formulas too. And again, maybe I'll just do one of them. Maybe we'll try to show this one. And so if we again did a little proof, I would have us start off with what looks most like that, which is this sine squared theta equals one half times one minus cosine of two theta. Let's begin there. Okay. So I'm going to write this in. I have sine squared of theta is equal to one half times one minus cosine of uh, theta. Uh, I need to fix something here. I'm, I'm trying to use my power reducing formula. So this should be a two theta. There we go. All right, if we come back over here and check, that's what we should see. One half times one minus cosine of two theta. Well, 
I could start making it look more like this um, in one easy way, which is I could go ahead and I could rewrite that as sine squared theta equal to one minus cosine of two theta all over two. Okay. So it's starting to look a little more like this. Okay. I also need to take the square root. I'm trying to solve actually for solve this thing down here for sine. So if I use my square root property, I get that sine of theta is equal to plus or minus the square root of one minus cosine of two theta all over two. And then you may actually already notice that this, even though it looks different than this, I'm gonna bring it over here. I know it's up above, but notice that for both of these, you start off with some angle. And when you move to the other side, you have twice the angle that you started with. So these really are the same formula. Okay. If you wanted to make them look identical, we could make what we call a substitution. Okay. And so if we did that, we would maybe say something along the lines of uh, let, uh, let's see, theta be equal to alpha over two. Okay. And if we do that, we can now rewrite that sine of theta now as a sine of alpha over two, uh, plus or minus the square root of one minus cosine of two times theta. So that's two times alpha over two, which is just alpha. And again, you can do something very similar to get the power reducing formula for cosine. And then once you've done that, you could just divide the two power reducing formulas for, or uh, you could divide the two half angle formulas for sine and cosine to get the half angle formula for tangent would be one option. Okay. And you could imagine you could also maybe work with this. That might be easier to go from here to here. All right, well, now that we've seen all these and we've shown why a couple of these hold, let's move on and actually try and work with some of these here. So example one wants us to find the exact value of sine of two theta, cosine of two theta, and tangent of two theta, given that all we know is that cosine of theta is equal to 40 over 41, and that theta lies in quadrant four. Well, let's make our sketch. This is always going to be helpful on questions like this. Nice little sketch here. And I'm only going to sketch really uh, quadrant four because that's where our angle is going to be. There we go. And so there's our angle. We don't know, uh, again, what direction theta revolved or how many times it revolved to get here. But we do know that it lies here. And so therefore its reference angle is gonna be right here. Okay. Let's also um, turn this into a triangle. Okay. Right, we know that cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So it's 40 here, 41 here. I want to make my theta prime look a little bit cleaner. There we go. And so we do need to find this side here. So if we were to use our Pythagorean theorem to find that missing side, let's maybe call that missing side Y. So I have 40 squared plus Y squared is equal to 41 squared. And so Y is just going to simply be the square root of... There we go. Uh, 41 squared minus 40 squared. And you know what? I'll pull up my calculator and we can see what that gives us. 
So we have that 41 squared minus 40 squared. And that gives us 81. So if we square root that, that's going to give us 9. There we go. So I get 9 here. So now I know all this... I know all the side lengths here for this triangle, and I know the, the corresponding angle. So now if, say, we want to find sine of 2 theta, here's what we'll do is we're going to use actually our double angle identity because it's going to take us from 2 theta. Because, right, we don't have a sketch of 2 theta. We only have a sketch of theta. So using our double angle identity will give us this, 2 sine of theta, cosine of theta. And I think based on this picture, we can figure out what both of those are. Okay. So sine in the fourth quadrant is negative, right? It's in the fourth quadrant, we're below the x-axis. So I'm going to put in my negative first. And then I need to figure out what two things to divide here. So sine is, again, opposite over hypotenuse. So it's going to give us a 9 over 41. There we go. Cosine in this quadrant is positive. Okay. And in fact, we already know what cosine theta is equal to. It's equal to 40 over 41. There we go. And so if we were to go ahead and multiply all that together, we're going to end up with minus 720 divided by 16, uh, 1681. There we go. So that's one of the ones that we wanted to find. We wanted to find sine of 2 theta. We've done just that. Uh, let's try cosine of 2 theta. Now, remember with cosine of 2 theta, we have three different options. Okay. And I want to point out that we do not know. Well, I guess we did just find it. I was going to say we don't have sine of theta. So it might be easier to work with the one that involves cosine. Okay. But actually, we do know sine of theta. We know cosine of theta. So there's no really actually wrong answer for which of these three we would go with. But I'm gonna choose the one that only has the cosine in it. And the reason for that is, is that that's gonna be based on information we were given, okay. right? We were given cosine of theta. So I'll just be able to plug that directly into here. Let's go down and do that. Two cosine squared theta minus one. There we go. So again, we were given cosine of theta. It's 40 over 41. We just need to square it and take away 1. And so if we were to do that, um, let's see what that gives us. 2 times 40 over 41 squared. And I think we said minus 1. So that gives us 1,519 over 1681. And let me just double check my results here. Okay, that looks good. All right, and so there's one last one that we want to check out. We want to find tangent of 2 theta. Now, note, we've already found sine of 2 theta. We've already found cosine of 2 theta. We could just simply divide these to get our tangent of 2 theta. We don't actually have to use the double angle identity for the tangent of 2 theta because of this. Okay. I kind of ran out of room, so I might uh, start that process over here off to the right.
Okay, so for the sine of theta, we have that minus 720 over 1681 all over the 1519 over 1681. So if we flip and we multiply here, the 1681s will cancel and we'll get minus 720 over 1519. Right, and so that's our third one there. All right. So let's go ahead and try some more example problems. We actually started off with a pretty tough one here. These next couple, they might be a little bit easier. So the thing is with part A and B here is we have to figure out which identities we're going to use. Okay. So for this one, we actually just saw this one. This one is the uh, cosine, and maybe I'll write the word identity. So yeah, cosine of two theta is equal to one minus two sine squared of theta. And right, that is this one right here, one minus two sine squared theta is equal to cosine of two theta. Right, and I'm gonna write down the identity I wanna use down here too while we're at it. So we only have one double angle formula for sine and it's the one we wanna use here. Um, so we have sine of two theta is equal to two sine theta, cosine theta. Here we go. And so if we're gonna do this, we need to first note what this pi over two is gonna do here. Okay. So that pi over two is taking place of theta. Which means that over here, when we go to double theta, we're going to get two times that pi over two. So the way I would actually rewrite this, so I'd say that this is cosine of two times the angle. And that gives us cosine of pi. And then cosine of pi is something that we know um, the value of here. Cosine of pi is negative one. And that's all we'd have to do. Similarly, down here, we need to identify theta again. And theta is that 22.5. And so if we go ahead and apply the formula, we should have sine of double our angle. And let's see what that gives us. 22.5 times two, that's gonna give us 45. So we have sine of 45 degrees. And we know sine of 45 degrees. That one's the square root of two over two. So here, uh, when we move to the next page, we're going to try another question that has some similarity similarities with this. Okay. So this says use the half angle formula to find the exact value of a hundred and or of sine of one hundred and five degrees. Okay. So let's first of all go get that identity, okay. or maybe I'll write it right here. The half angle formula that they're referring to, and there's only one for sine, is sine of alpha over 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root 
of one minus cosine alpha and then all over two. There we go. All right, well, we have a little bit of work to do. Uh, one of the things we need to determine is whether we want this to be positive or negative. So if we're going to use this little half angle formula here, um, right, we are trying to find sine of alpha over 2, which is this 105. That is our alpha over 2. So if that's our alpha over two, we need to figure out, well, is sine positive or is it negative in whatever quadrant this lies in? Okay. So that leads us to another question is what quadrant does 105 degrees lie in? Okay. Well, it lies in quadrant two, right? It's between 90 degrees and 180 degrees meaning it is in quadrant two. And I think uh, I'm going to scoot this up a little bit because our next line here, um, we're going to want some space for. So I'm going to start there and maybe I'll put my equal to right below it. And uh, when it does come to this quadrant two that we were talking about, right? Um, in quadrant two, we're talking about positive y values, so sine will be positive. So let's add that in here before we go any further. Um, so it lies in quadrant two, and sine is positive in quadrant two. All right, so that's what we needed to know. So now if we keep going here, we're going to have the positive square root of 1 minus cosine of alpha. You could actually solve this for alpha here by multiplying both sides by 2. So if you multiply both sides by 2 here, we're going to get alpha is equal to 210. And if you were to go and use your unit circle to figure out what cosine of 210 is, you're going to wind up getting minus the square root of 3 over 2. And I'm going to see if I can write that kind of neater and then shrink it down. Let's see. Okay, so we have 1 minus cosine of 210. And again, cosine of 210 is just minus root 3 over 2. And then down here, we have our 2. Okay. So if, the, if we were taking maybe a test or something, I would be completely fine with you maybe just uh, getting rid of the double negative and then leaving it like that. Now, uh, you could, like I said, you could leave it like this, but just in case the homework program wants us to simplify this further, I'm going to have us simplify this further. Okay. So my recommendation here would be to get rid of the fractions within fractions. So I'm going to extend that out a little bit. And is what I'm going to multiply by in here is 2 over 2. And so multiplying by 2 over 2 just means I'm multiplying by 1. So I'm not changing what this is equal to, just changing what it looks like. And then we have the square root. And so now we have 2 
plus, because right, two times one is two, and then two times the square root of three over two, this is gonna leave us with a root three, the twos will cancel there. Um, and then in the denominator, we have two times two, which is four. And there's only one last thing we can do, and that is we can take the square root of the numerator and we can take the square root of the denominator. When I take the square root of the numerator, um, it's not a very nice number. So the best I can do is just leave it like this. Okay. However, the square root of four is a nice number that comes out to two. Okay. And so now we officially have this thing completely simplified. All right, so we've worked a little bit now with the double and half angle. It's time that we do a little bit of work with these power reducing formulas. So we're starting off here with 10 times cosine to the fourth of X. It might be helpful to have the identity that we need here. We're actually only gonna need one of those power reducing ones. We're gonna want this one. So I'm just gonna copy it. There we go. So my goal, which is not 100% clear yet, because we haven't actually seen one of these, um, our goal is gonna be to take this cosine to the fourth and to break it down into a bunch of cosines to just the first power. Okay. Again, it seems like a completely silly thing to do, but it actually ends up being um, useful to us later on down the road. So here we go. Okay. I'm going to begin by actually writing that cosine to the fourth as cosine squared times cosine squared. So this is going to look like this here. At 10 times cosine squared x times cosine squared x. And then I can rewrite both of those using that trig identity. I can now call this 1 half times 1 plus cosine of double my angle. So this is going to now be a 2x. And I'm going to do the same thing with the second cosine squared x. I'm going to replace it with 1 half times 1 plus cosine of double my angle. There we go. Now, I want you to notice that there are these three constants floating around, but it's all multiplication here. So if I were to multiply those together, that's going to give me a 10 on the top and a 4 on the bottom. Right, 10 times 1 times 1 is 10, and 1 times 2 times 2 is 4. Okay. So I just have these two things here now. Let's, uh, let's just write it that this is squared. Okay. And since that's squared, we're going to want to FOIL. Okay. And right before I FOIL, though, I'm going to reduce this a little bit. Right, We can divide 10 and 4 both by 2. Now, as I go to FOIL here, I get 1 times 1, which is 1. Then I get 1 times cosine of 2x, which is cosine of 2x. But then I get another cosine of 2x times 1. So I'm going to end up with a total of 2 cosine of 2x's. And then lastly, I need to do cosine of 2x times cosine of 2x, which is going to be cosine squared of 2x. All right, so is what we can see is we haven't accomplished our goal here yet. We wanted all of our cosines to only be to the first power, and you can see there's one here that's still to the second. Okay. Well, before we try to break it down any further, let's go ahead and uh, maybe replace, or actually not replace, let's distribute our five halves through. All right, 
there we go. All right, so here's the deal, is I need to apply the power reducing formula one last time to this, and this will get us down to um, a cosine that's just raised to the first power. So it looks like I need a little bit more room. So I'm gonna start a second column here. And so I have my five halves, I have my five cosine of two X, then I have a uh, five halves here. And then finally, I'm gonna apply that power reducing formula to this. Okay. But remember, every time we do this, we're going from some angle to two times that angle. So that means that that two X that you're seeing down here, I'm gonna double that and make it into a four X. So this is now going to look like times one half times one plus cosine of double my angle. So this is now four X and we're getting really close. Um, I want us to go ahead and distribute now um, this five halves and one half through. There we go. Okay. And then there's one last thing we can do. We can combine some like terms here. So if say I wanted to add the five halves and the five fourths, I could get a common denominator of four, which would make this one that I have kind of highlighted here. That would turn that into a 10 fourths. So 10 fourths plus five fourths is 15 fourths. And then I still have my five cosine of two X and my five force cosine of four X. And so we officially have got this down to a function that has cosines only to the first power. So when you get to calculus two and you have, and let's say you had to take the antiderivative of this, whatever that means, uh, you would have to do this process first, and then you could take the antiderivative. All right, so let's go ahead and give another one a try. And if you want to on this one, you can pause the video and give it a try. This one actually does work out a little bit cleaner than the one up above. Um, but, uh, you may also see here, we're going to need two identities this time. We're going to need the power reducing formula for sine squared and the power reducing formula for cosine squared. Let's, let's see what happens when we apply those. So I have this eight here, um, the power reducing formula for sine squared of X. This is going to be one minus cosine of two X while the cosine squared X, it's power reducing formula looks almost the exact same other than we have addition. And uh, once again, we have these three constants here, eight times a half times a half. So that's just actually gonna give us two. And then we have this uh, one minus cosine of 2x times 1 plus cosine of 2x. And so I'm going to have us FOIL again, but some of you might be noticing that is going to be a difference of squares. So in other words, the middle terms are going to cancel when you FOIL, and you're going to wind up with just 1 minus cosine squared of 2x. So this is what makes this one a little bit cleaner than the last one is that cancellation of the middle terms. Now I'm going to go ahead and distribute my two through. But you may be noticing that we are not done. We still have this power of two. We need to get down to only powers of one. So we need to apply this right here 
um, to our cosine squared of 2x. Okay. Now, what I have highlighted here was based on cosine squared of x. So remember, to go from cosine squared of x to this, we did double the angle. So I'm going to need to double the angle again. Okay. Let's see what that looks like if we do that. So I'm going to have 1 half times 1 plus cosine of double the angle. So that's 4x. And then we can go ahead and distribute here. Or, um, yeah, let's, let's do that. We're going to have 2. These cancel. So this is just a negative that we have in front of this stuff here. So this is going to just turn into 2 minus 1 minus cosine of 4x. And one last step, 2 minus 1 is 1. So this is just 1 minus cosine of 4x. And we've accomplished our goal. We went from having these powers greater than 1 to having only powers of 1. And in fact, we only have one trig function here. All right, so is what we have left is to practice verifying identities. And I think you all have seen and done enough of these now that at any point, um, you could probably pause and give these a try. Okay. But I'm just going to go ahead and go through these remaining four um, with little pause in between um, the, the questions here. Okay. So with this one that we're looking at here, example five, part A, we have two sides. Okay? And I've kind of mentioned, I, I typically, typically like to start off with the more complicated side. Okay? And so for me, that side right now is this two cotangent theta plus one cotangent squared of theta. So whenever we're starting these, we write down one of the two sides. There we go. All right, and now that we've written one of these sides down, we need to figure out how on earth we're going to end up with a sign. Okay. Well, all of our trig identities involving sine usually involve cosine and not tangent or cotangent. Okay. Um, so is what I'm trying to get at is maybe it might be helpful to rewrite all this in terms of sine and cosine. All right. And there, there might actually be, uh, something else helpful we could do. Um, I'm just debating whether I think it's going to be worth it. Um, I don't think it's necessary. So let, let's go ahead and rewrite all this in terms of sine and cosine as we said we would here. So I have two times sine theta over cosine theta. And then this is all over um, one plus sine squared theta over cosine squared theta. Okay. There we go. And so is what I'm kind of noticing is we have these coast we have fractions within fractions and i kind of want to try to wipe those out so that maybe i can end up with something that looks more like this okay. so is what i like to do to wipe these out is i'm going to actually multiply here by cosine squared theta in the numerator and in the denominator i'm going to multiply by the same thing okay. specifically it's going to get rid of this and this And so if we keep going here, let's see what we wind up with. Okay. So I should end up with a 2. I have that sine theta. But when I combine the cosine squared theta and the cosine theta, we're going to get a little bit of cancellation there, and we'll just be left with a single cosine theta. Then in my denominator, when I multiply the cosine squared through, I have cosine squared theta times 1, which is cosine squared theta. And then for this next one, the cosine squareds cancel, and I just end up with a sine squared theta. 
And cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta is one. That comes from our Pythagorean identity. So we just have two sine theta, cosine theta. And well, this, we have a double, ident double angle identity that says that this is equal to two sine theta, cosine theta. And so we have verified this identity. Um, oh, um, no, we haven't. I've said what we need to do here, which is apply the double angle identity, but that should make this look like sine of two theta. There we go. All right. So yeah, we started with the right hand side, ended with the left. All right, let's give this one a go. So again, we have to pick a side to start with. Um, I might, I might have us pick the uh, right hand side this time. They look uh, pretty equivalent. I don't know that starting with one versus the other is going to make that big of a difference here. Uh, one pro to starting with this side is that I know I can apply my one of my double angle identities here on the cosine of 2x. So I'll have us do that here in a second. But I want to grab all those so you can see why I'm going to choose maybe one of these versus the other. Now, when I go to choose one of these, there actually is no wrong answer. They will all work. It's just some will work faster than others. I just want all three of these here. Yeah. So with these three double angle identities for cosine, I do notice that if I say we're to use this one here, okay, that I'd have one term that might look like sine squared over cosine squared eventually. Okay. Um, if I use, let's see if I use any others, what might happen? Um, if I do use this one that's circled, I'll also have a one over cosine squared, which will be a cosecant squared. So actually this one doesn't look like the best option. Okay. This one, if I use this up here, there's no way that we'll get a tangent out of that, at least not instantly. Um, but this one actually seems to be the most favorable. Okay. Let's, see, let's see why if we don't see why at the moment. So it's going to give us cosine squared x minus sine squared x over cosine squared x. And this is one of those situations where we can kind of do the reverse of adding fractions. We can break this up. There we go. And so now that we've broken it up, well, cosine squared x over cosine squared x is 1. Okay. And remember, that's the first thing we want. Then minus, which also matches what we're trying to get to, and then sine squared over cosine squared, that is tangent squared of x. Okay. And so we have wound up with exactly what we wanted here. But maybe I'll highlight the version of this that we used. Um, I think it would be an interesting exercise for you to try and see if you can uh, prove this identity using the other two. Because um, you can't. You're just probably going to have to use a Pythagorean identity after that. Yeah. All right. And then we just got two more here. And these, uh, at least I see the angle over two. So these are maybe pushing me towards maybe we'll wind up using a half angle identity at some point. Um, but let's go ahead and zoom in and pick a side. So the right hand side looks more complicated to me. So I'm going to start with that one.
as we do eventually go to apply some identities later on, um, some of the less obvious ones, do note that we're starting off with thetas, but we want to end up with theta over twos at some point. All right, well, one thing we could do here is, you know, this is in terms of cosecant and cotangent. It would be nice if we maybe had sines and cosines instead. So I'm going to start this one off a lot like, I think it was our first one. Yeah, it was our first one. I rewrote everything in terms of sines and cosines. Let's do that here. It's not, it's not always the best strategy, but a lot of times it works. And here, I think it is the strategy we want, but uh, one over cosecant, that's, or uh, cosecant of theta is one over sine theta. That's what I was trying to say there. Cotangent, that's cosine theta over sine theta. And then lastly, in the denominator here, we have two times one over sine theta. And uh, from here, um, we have a few options again. Okay. Um, one option is, well, maybe we could just multiply the numerator and denominator by sign here to wipe out all these fractions. Okay. Again, this has been a common trick for us as well. So sine theta and sine theta. Okay. Again, I'm just multiplying by one there. And if we do that, that's going to give us a sine theta times 1 over sine theta, which is 1. And then if I take my sine theta and multiply by this, the sine theta is cancel, and I just am left with a cosine. And then in my denominator here, the sine theta times 1 over sine theta is just 1. So all I'm left with is the 2 that's there. All right, now here's the last thing, is this actually does look a lot like uh, a couple of our formulas, but specifically I'm thinking about our power reducing formula, okay? Um, let me go copy which one I'm specifically thinking of. You could imagine it's gonna be the one with the sign because we do have this subtraction, but I want us to be able to see this. So let me, yeah, I'm going to try this one out right here. I'm just going to come bring this back down. All right, and let's see how we could maybe use this. So we have almost this exact same thing over here on the right. Okay. You just might notice that I have a two theta in here instead of a theta. Okay. But is what I want you to really keep in mind is that if we use this identity and we go from here to here, the angle should split in half, right? We go from two theta to theta. Okay. So is what I'm trying to say is I can rewrite this as sine squared of half the angle that I see here. And so that gives us theta over two there. Okay, and if you wanna think about this, maybe with like a substitution, which some people find that a little bit easier, maybe I'll make these into alphas. Okay. The substitution that we would just make is that two, two alpha, is equal to theta, right? That's what we see here, which would mean then that alpha is equal to theta over two, which is exactly what we have plugged in right here. All right, so there's another one down. We just got one more to go here. So we have this two tangent of alpha over two equals some, you know, big mess here. So I have no doubt I'm, I'm going to start off with that right-hand side here. That's going to be the easier side to start with. So we have a, what, a sine squared alpha plus one minus cosine squared alpha. 
all over sine of alpha times 1 plus cosine of alpha. All right, there we go. And so I'm going to center this, and we'll get to work. There we go. So again, we somehow are going to need to end up all the way here. Um, but I'm, I'm seeing something here right off the bat. Okay. Um, for instance, one minus cosine squared of alpha, that is equal to something that we are familiar with. Okay. Um, in fact, one minus cosine squared alpha is equal to sine squared alpha. Let's go ahead and write that. There we go. And then we can actually combine like terms. Sine squared alpha plus sine squared alpha, that's two sine squared alpha. And then we all want this all over, um, sine of alpha times one plus cosine of alpha. And then I see that uh, we can cancel a sign between the numerator and denominator, just one of them or one pair, so two sine alpha divided by one plus cosine of alpha. Now this is one that is probably not that familiar to us because we haven't worked with it much today, but I bet you we can find something that maybe looks somewhat like this. Okay. Let's go up to those half angle formulas and we're gonna look for one that has a one plus cosine alpha on the bottom. I go all the way back up here for tangent, right? So tangent of alpha over two is equal to this. Okay. So maybe, maybe I'll just, I'll copy the whole thing for now. So I said I was going to copy the whole thing, and I have, but I'm only going to save the parts of this that are necessary or are going to be helpful. Let me fix this here. There we go. Okay. So now that we have that identity here, you can see the only difference is this two that we have out front. Okay. So here's, here's all we have to do is we can just pull that two out front. And note, we can do this because two, I could rewrite as two over one. And if I wanted to multiply these, when you multiply fractions, you just multiply straight across. I'm not going to leave it like that, though. I'm going to just put two times this. And is what we just saw is that this part right here is equal to tangent of alpha over 2. So we just used one of our um, half angle formulas there. Okay. Specifically, again, that one up there in the green.